Hey everyone, today I want to show you my pretty decent sized collection of Rimmel. I think this is a brand that just doesn't get enough attention and I don't own every kind of product that they make, but slowly but surely I'm going to add to my collection because if you're looking for a drugstore uh, brand that really does a good job and gives you an amazing value, I think Rimmel just hits all the buttons and I just noticed lately as I type in the description box all the products that I use on a regular basis Rimmel keeps popping up so I thought I would show you what I have and also use this as an opportunity to get feedback from you all on what you think I need to add to the collection my only complaint with Rimmel is that not all the products that they make are available in the US I've picked up one or two products of theirs from the UK but by and large this is all available in the United States and um, maybe you guys can tell me. I know online. You can get just about anything you want online, so there's that. Okay, I'm going to start with the one foundation of theirs that I own. I bought this solely because Tanya Burr, Pixie 2 Woo, used to rave about this foundation and how much she loved it, and so I got it. Um, I ordered it online. I think I got it at ASOS, and it's the Wake Me Up Foundation, and just looking at the bottle should wake you up. My shade is 100 Ivory. It's a little light for me right now, but it's the perfect winter shade, and um, I really like it. It's not overly shiny. I personally don't like a true dewy finish. I don't like, to me, I just look sweaty, but um, it's not matte. It's definitely a satiny, light reflecting, I'd say, uh, finish. It says here that it's an anti-fatigue effect with a radiant glow. I don't know, but it wears well. It has never broken me out. It smells nice. It reminds me very much of the Bourjois Healthy Mix, to be honest with you. So if you haven't had a chance to try that, maybe the Rimmel Wake Me Up will be a nice alternative for you. Now I have two of these, but I only show you one. It's the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder, Press Powder, again, another Tanya Burr recommendation. And this is in the color Transparent, which is just your basic powder. I mean, it's pretty chalky when you do it like that, but I just use a big fluffy brush. I also have the next color up um, in my purse for touch-ups, but I've never used it because really, especially like, it, it's, I have dry skin, so I put this to set my, I use this to set my foundation, and then I really never, almost never touch up during the day. It just really sets your makeup that well. So this is what I use. This I know you can't get in the United States, or at least you, I have never seen it in a store. And one of my big regrets from my summer vacation in Scotland was that I didn't buy every single blush because they were, I don't know, three or four dollars US. It's very cheap and um, it doesn't look like much. It's a tiny little square. This is the Lasting Finish Soft Color Blush in 010 Santa Rose. It looks like nothing in the pan. It's nothing exciting. Even if I swatch it for you, again, is it exciting? No. Blush is never swatch right, but that's sort of a peachy pink. I'm wearing it right now and I went really heavy handed with it just to show you how deep, how pink you can make it on your cheeks. But if you're looking for just the perfect everyday blush, if there's only one blush that you want to wear every day and you don't want to mess about with it and you don't want to worry about blending and looking too garish, all of their colors are a similar tone in, in that they're, they're all very natural and very, very soft to the touch very cheap and they last all day on me as well. So love this. I'm gonna have to get the rest of the collection. The, I think I only own one eyeshadow palette from Rimmel. I, I'd have to dig through my collection, but I just bought this on a couple of days ago and I wore it yesterday and um, put a picture on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, wearing it one way. I'm wearing it a completely different way today. This is the Rimmel London Glam Eyes Quad Eyeshadow in 002 Smoky Brun or Brun. And um, I'm going to get rid of the annoying little. We never use these. These colors, I will swatch for you, are very soft. There's not a lot of difference in pigmentation. Um, just to tell you what I've got going on in here. Today I tried to do a smoky look, but a very soft, definitely wearable daytime smoky look. And then I did the darkest color on the bottom and ombre it up to light. So I did this color all over the lid and it looks like this. It's a pretty soft color. Then in the crease I used this color. So you can see next to each other not a huge difference. And then on the brow bone of course I used the lightest color which is this 
one. It's hard to move that one all by itself. And then I just took a small smudger brush and along the lash line did the darkest color, which looks like that, and a little bit underneath. And it's technically smoky, but it's very soft. I would wear this to work. I would wear this to business meetings. I would wear this. I wore it. It's a Sunday afternoon. It might be a little glam for Sunday, but it, I wanted to play. So um, very soft, very creamy feeling. Um, reminds me of almost of Stila, of how soft it is, but without the fallout from Stila. I don't know if all the eyeshadows are like this, but this palette is, and I love, love, love it. And again, I think under $5. Last face product I have, I get asked about this all the time. It's the Rimmel Match Perfection Highlighter and Concealer, or it's two-in-one concealer and highlighter. I've been using the 230 Fair Light. It's this little squeezy tube, and I'm pretty much out of it now. And it has, <clears throat> excuse me, a brush applicator, and you squeeze it out, and then I do it under my eyes. I only use this for under my eyes. Well, I went to buy um, a backup, and they were sold out of my color, and I said, you know what? Can you ever be too light under your eyes? Well, you can, but when you're as white as me, it's hard to get too light. So I picked up the lightest shade, which is 125 Fair. I have it on today. I think it's okay. I think this may actually work out a little better even, especially as we move into the uh, cooler months, and I'm not pretending to be tan anymore, then this will work great. And I have used a million under eye concealers and I'm telling you, this is fabulous. I would recommend setting it with powder though. Um, I have found as I'm getting older that I get sticky under here and it just helps if I take like the Real Technique setting brush and I've been using MAC Prep and Prime setting powder or finishing powder and just putting it under my eyes. But love it, love it, love it. Love it. Okay, on to my rather extensive eyeliner collection. I went a little nuts. So if you've been watching me for a long time, then you know that my favorite eyeliner for quite a while has been the Stila Smudge Sticks. They are, but I, I'm a big fan of a deep dark brown. That's what I wear 99.9% of the time. And I love Stila's dark browns. They have a couple. But then I found the new Rimmel Scandalized line, and I have gone a little crazy. Now, the only one I don't own, I believe, is navy. Because I just, I don't know when I would wear navy. But at these prices, I think I might just buy it, just have it. So, I'll swatch them all. But this one, if you only buy one, it's the, they're all the, the all of them are part of the Rimmel Scandalize Waterproof Kohl Kajal line. But this one is called Nude. And, hang on, there it is. Okay, it's right there. I'm wearing it in my waterline. I'm actually wearing it as an accent here. I outlined my cupid's bow and in the middle of my lips with it as well. If you want that one eyeliner that everyone puts in their waterline to brighten up their eyes, I have tried everything under this. I have the Stila one. I have the Too Faced one. I, is it Too Faced? Yes. I have the MAC one. The MAC one was the worst by far. This is so creamy. It is so soft. It will not scratch your eyelids or I, whatever that is, it won't scratch your skin, and this sucker doesn't budge. All the other ones eventually wear off so quickly. I mean, it's in your eye, it's gonna get wet. This stuff stays put, it's amazing. So love this, if you only buy one, buy this one. Now, for my beloved brown, I use the brown, and I will swatch it like so. It's pretty dark, very chocolatey and yummy. Just to swatch that against the black, although I didn't get black black, I got sparkling black, so now I still have to go back and get black. The black has some very subtle sparkle in it, right there. And then I have bronze, I use the bronze one a lot as well. And here is bronze, as compared to down from that is the brown, so bronzes. I like bronze, again, on the waterline. It's not quite as harsh as a dark brown or black or right under the eye. Love that. A new one I picked up that I'm actually, excuse me, wearing today on my on my upper lid is Taupe. This one I bought because uh, Kristen Game, I'll, if, if I mention someone, I'll put their link below. Um, she is a, she loves Taupe, like she is the Taupe queen. And I initially didn't think I was gonna like this at all, but I love it. Right there. It's not so light that you, see? I mean, I have a little bit of shadow over it, but 
it's not so light that you can't see when i thought taupe i thought beige and who wants beige eyeliner but this again if you're looking for a slightly softer look i have it on under my eyes as well really love this um purple is big for this fall and they just came out with purple i wish i'd had this when i did my purple eye tutorial i would have whipped this sucker out and here is purple it's got a bit of a kind of a shine to it almost satin definitely satin finish the finish on these is very akin to um, if you remember if you ever had the opportunity to play with cray paw kind of oil pastel crayons when you were a kid very similar feeling to that and then the last one I have that I actually put on a little bit under here just to play is um, what do they call this silver I like that they don't mess about with the names they just call it what it is and this one is silver and this is cool look at that Look at that! I think that would be fun all over the lid for something. I don't know what, but I just think that is so cool. Now, these things, if I don't get these off soon, they will never come off. They Once they are set, you can smudge them a little bit, but once they're set, they're already set. Once they're set, they don't move without makeup remover, so love these. Now, they do make like a crayon version, a big a, like a jumbo eyeliner. I don't have any of those yet, but I will. Okay, what's left? Lips. Okay, I only have two of their lipsticks, which I found shocking. If I have worn this a lot in videos, every time, almost every time people ask me what color it is and I, that I'm wearing and I can't remember, it's usually this one. It is part of their Lasting Finish Lipstick line, and it's 070 or 070, Airy, I don't know why I'm holding it like this, Airy Fairy. Um, I'm almost, I'm down at the little nub of it. It's a beautiful color. And I'm trying to remember, I think Lisa Lisa D1 was the one that recommended this because she, I know, loves Estee Lauder Rose Amethyst, which is a discontinued lipstick shade. And she recommended this as an alternative. And it is very similar. It's as close as you're going to get. And it's just such an easy to wear color. And I initially put that on. That's what I have on on the bottom layer. And then I started playing. It also has a nice... Just a nice, very subtle, very subtle, sweet scent to it, but almost non-discernible. Okay, so there's Airy Fairy. And then I picked up last fall, I think it was, Vintage Pink, which I kind of forgot I had. So we're going to have to, and this is great for fall. It's a nice plummy tone, kind of deeper shade. I like that a lot. And then I have my lip gloss collection. This is where things get a little crazy. Um, so I will start with the Stay Glossy, Stay Glossies. I have three of them. This one has no name on it. I do uh, have another pet peeve is they don't print the name on the package. So if you remove the packaging, you don't know what it is, but I'll look it up. It's one, two, six, nine is this one. And they have doe foot. And I think I have this one on. It's really soft pink. I mean, it's really just a layer. For me, I just layer this. Or if I was wearing a lip liner only, I would put this over it. Um, a very soft, nice color. And then I have this one, again, that has no name. 1322, I believe it is. And it's more of a golden gloss. And again, this one I would use more for a layering look than for anything on its own because it's almost colorless. It has a small, slight golden sheen. And it's right, where is it? There, see, I mean, it's practically translucent. So this would be great just to add a little dimension to the lips. Or if you're really looking for nude, that's the way to go. And then this one I picked off, it was seven, picked up, it was 75% off, so it was like a dollar. I mean, it was ridiculous. This one is called Fuchsia Fever, and this has a definite color to it. And I'm running out of places, so let's see. There you go. It's a very deep, bright fuchsia. I have the, they're called show-offs here in the United States. I believe they're apocalypse. In, oh, they are, because I bought one in the UK and then I picked up two here. Let me remove my swatches so I have somewhere to show you. Actually, look at this. I'm wiping with the remover. This is a Neutrogena. So they do stay. I will say, though, that by the end of the day, I don't have to scrub my eyelids to get them off, but, okay. Clean slate. 
So the one I picked up in the UK is really for me more of a fall color, so I haven't worn it out yet. And this is, I think they all line up to be the same color. This is 101 Celestial. And I thought it was a great, a great fall color. And it looks like that. I don't find that these wear particularly longer than any other lip gloss. I think they are marketed, maybe even not. Um, the Stay Glossies do stay glossy for quite a long time, but these are just like any other lip gloss. Okay, so that's the UK one, which I also think is the same exact color in the US. Then I picked up 701 Stargazer, and these I found the best selection at Walgreens, actually. So that's, to me, more of something you put on top of another shade. There's just not a lot of payoff there. And then the other one, which I like a lot, and actually I'm wearing today over Airy Fairy, because I just wanted to see how that looked, is Nova 102. And it looks like that. So I have Airy Fairy on, which is this one. And then I layered, what did I layer? What did I tell you? This is Nova, this one, over it. And then I thought, what the heck, let's just add a little more color, like a little shine. So then I added this one. So I have a lot going on on my lips. But that's that. As well, so that is my Rimmel collection. I have to say I am eager to try some of their mascaras. I know y'all have recommended them to me before, but if you could recommend specifically which one again so I have it all in one spot, that would be really helpful. Um, I haven't tried their bronzers before, but um, I'm really loving the bronzer I have, so I don't know that I'm going to be playing with that yet. Um, I haven't tried their regular concealer, just their under eye concealer. And um, yeah, but I love, love, love their products so far. So if you're looking for a great, really inexpensive drugstore brand and um, to fill out your collection or start one, um, I cannot recommend this brand enough to you. So now it's your turn. Tell me what I need to buy. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.